हेलो स्टूडेंट ऑफ क्लास ट्वेल्थ गुड मॉर्निंग दिस इज़ वेरी फर्स्ट क्लास ऑफ योर क्लास ट्वेल्थ केमिस्ट्री लैब सो फॉर विच वी विल स्टार्ट अवर फर्स्ट चैप्टर विच बिलोंग्स टू द सर्फिस केमिस्ट्री इट इज यू नो द सर्फिस केमिस्ट्री the general theory of the surface chemistry we can say that it is the branch of chemistry which deals with the study of surface phenomena like adsorption etc so and the students you know that the colloids were introduced in 1861 by the scottish scientist thomas graham the substances can be divided into two categories namely dispose uh, namely colloids and crystalloids colloids are the first we will study about colloids the colloids are the non crystalline heterogeneous mixture which do not passes through the animal membrane animal membrane however they can passes through the filter paper they have a particle size in the range of 1 to 1000 nanometer they are quite stable and show tindall's effect they are generally <clears throat> translucent in nature that is uh it's uh, they are not clear transparent they are translucent for example starch gum starch or gum or egg albumin in water okay so and another is crystalloid the crystalloids they are the crystalline in nature in solutions form they can passes through the animal membrane they are also stable in nature for example sugar common salt urea etc however it was found that the substances behaves as colloid or crystalloid in different medium for example common salt forms a colloid in benzene but a crystalloid in water so the component of colloid you see colloids having the dispersed phase and dispersion medium so dispersed phase it is a solute like component which is present in the lesser quantity in the colloid always be remember what is dispersed phase dispersed phase is the solute which solute like component which is present in lesser quantity in a colloid dispersion medium second is dispersion medium it is the solvent like component which is present in the larger quantity in colloid it is present in larger quantity in colloid now the next is types of colloids there are two types of colloid lyophilic colloids and lyophobic colloids lyophilic colloids these colloids are formed when substances like gum starch etc are mixed in suitable solvent directly they are also called reversible sol they are quite stable and cannot be precipitated in such solution the dispersed phase has great affinity for the dispersion medium next is lyophobic colloid when substances like metals and their sulfides are mixed with the solvent they do not form colloid they can form colloids only by the in indirect method only by indirect method the colloid obtained as the result are called lyophobic sol lyophobic colloids they are called irreversible sol lyophobic sol called irreversible sol they are not stable 
and can be precipitated by a small amount of an impurity. In such soil, the dispersed phase has no affinity for the dispersion medium. Okay. In such a the dispersed phase has no affinity for the dispersion medium. So these are the general descriptions of colloidal solutions in which we have seen the types of colloids, what are the colloidal state. Now the first experiment related to this uh, chapter that is to prepare a sample of colloid solution, colloidal solutions of agalbumin or starch or any other gum etc. Apparatus required for this we will, will require beaker, one beaker, glass rod, agalbumin, distilled water, filter paper etc. Now the theory of this experiment you have I have already stated you it is the lyophilic so colloidal solution the ag solution sol of agalbumin is a lyophilic colloidal solution hence having the great affinity for the dispersion medium you know here dispersion medium we have distilled water and the dispersed phase is agalbumin so that is water so it is also called a hydrophilic sol we can say that the sol in which dispersion medium is water they are also known as hydrophilic sol it is prepared in cold water because agalbumin is a protein agalbumin is a protein has coagulated with the warm water it is very stable in nature process is quite easy procedure for preparing colloidal solution we will require 100 ml of water and 2 gram of egg albumin powder powdered egg albumin if it is not in the powdered form we can make it powdered by crushing it in with the help of mortar and pestle okay after making it powdered mass we will transfer into the beaker take a beaker and water nearly 100 ml of water and 2 gram of agalbumin take a glass rod which is for the stirring purpose and in the cold water we will stir it vigorously till the albumin powder dissolve in water after complete dissolution you will observe a turbid solutions will form okay you should know that the colloidal solutions should be pure it should not having any impurities if it is having the impurities it will precipitate it, it will make it will form precipitate so we should take a clean beaker clean water distilled water and then stir it and finally we will filter the solution with a normal filter paper you will observe it can easily passes from the normal filter paper but it do not passes through the parchment paper or animal membrane parchment paper such as uh, what meant filter paper number one which act as a semi permeable membrane and it do not allow colloidal solution to pass through it because of the pore size of this paper is very small smaller than that of the colloidal particle okay so finally when you prepare such in such a way you will prepare the egg albumin sol and observe you will observe that the egg albumin sol obtain is completely translucent in nature it is translucent in nature it is turbid in nature turbid in color so this is your observation 
some precautions we have to follow also precautions such as grind this egg albumin powder into a fine powder before adding to water add only distilled water to prepare the soil i have already told you the water should be purified and add the paste very slowly use the earth always try to use clean apparatus okay so this is your first experiment to prepare a sample of colloidal solutions of egg albumin very simple procedure and it this belongs to the surface chemistry i hope you have understood this experiment very well thank you